Hey guys, um, today we're going to talk about tetanus, um, which is under the musculoskeletal section slash neuro section. Um, officially, we're going to learn about here, it is a, eventually when the slide changes, <laughs> a nervous system disorder. Um, and so um, you could consider it a neurological disorder. Uh, it affects both the brain and the spine. And when we're talking about tetanus, it is an infection. Um, this is very, very, very rare. Like this is something, if you see someone with actual tetanus in your career, it's gonna be very rare. Um, but you know, the key here is to learn a lot about what it looks like, um, who's at risk for it, how we can prevent it, um, you know, uh, so that we don't have as many people getting tetanus. Because once you get tetanus, it's very severe, very painful. Um, so what this bacteria does, this bacterial infection does, is it leads to sustained muscle contraction or rigidity, or in other words, um, like tension, rig like rigidity and spasms are really what classify um, or help to as a whole, um, uh, what do you call them, um, uh, to like, if you're trying to think about what tetanus looks like, think spasms and rigidity. Um, so who's at risk for this? So people that are at risk for tetanus are going to be those with open wounds. So you can think about people that have uh, used IV drugs, um, people that have burns because of the lack of skin integrity, um, frostbite, um, and open fractures as well. And open fractures, remember, are fractures where the bone is going through the um, through the skin. Um, animal bites, and the book also talks about human bites, but hopefully there's not too, people out, too many people out there getting bit by humans, but maybe that's a thing now, who knows? Um, so also you want to think about people at risk are going to be those that are working with soil or dirt. So think about gardeners and think, uh, people that might be uh, more spending time out um, like landscapers and things like that as well. So the hallmark symptoms, like I mentioned, are muscle rigidity and muscle spasms. So they're going to have very tense muscles, and it's usually going to be here in their face, in their neck, in their upper chest. Um, and then they can also have spasms of those muscles as well. Um, it can lead to seizures um, because of the extra pressure and st the infection that builds up in the brain. Um, and they can even have spasms in their respiratory tract, which can lead to a non-patient airway, which should say non patent airway, so like a closed airway. So um, in other words, their airway can close off from as a result of that. So treatment wise, this is considered a medical emergency. Um, so like I said, very few people actually get active tetanus because most people are immunized to this from a young age. Um, but if, it, if a person does get tetanus, maybe their vaccine is not up to date or they have not been vaccinated, it is a medical emergency. emergency. Um, we do immediate thorough cleaning of all wounds. It's super key to get that wound clean. The sooner we can clean it, the better chance of that bacteria not um, digging deep into that wound. Um, if they're not up to date on their immunization, Immunization. They may need a booster or a TIG, and I'll talk about the difference between those two here in a minute. Um, other treatments they may receive, they may be on muscle relaxers um, to help to reduce some of the spasms um, and those um, the tension that's in their muscles. They may even need paralytics. When I say paralytics, I'm talking about a medical paralytic, a medication that's going to relax their muscles. Um, pain management is key in these patients as uh, we need to, um, what do you call it, decrease their pain um, that they're having as a result of their symptoms. Um, they may need to be intubated because of that respiratory tract, uh, the respiratory tract issues that they can have. Um, antibiotics are usually given, thorough wound care, and they may need IV fluids. Um, and the IV fluids help flush out some of that bacteria and um, prevent sepsis. So let's talk about prevention. So I said there's something called TIG um, prevention. This should also be considered under treatment too. So TIG and TDAP. So TIG is, um, is, it, is also known as immunoglobulin. And what this is, is this provides defense for you right now. Like if I had, um, if I had a really dirty wound or if I had no defense against tetanus at all, like maybe I've never had a vaccine or it's been greater than 10 years since I've had my last one. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to um, get some defense right now. So immunoglobulin Globulin is actual like antibodies that go into the body and they can start fighting the infection right now. Um, and so um, it's going to help, like, I can't like with this Tdap or, um, you know, the, the actual immunization, it takes two weeks to start working for my immunity to build. And if I have a serious tetanus infection or a really dirty wound, I don't have that time to wait. So this TIG or the tetanus immunoglobulin, it helps to give me um, a defense against my infection right now. Where the Tdap or booster, this is what most people are going to get. And most people that come into the hospital, we 
um, we're, at, we're worried they could get tetanus or they're high risk. Maybe they have an open wound, um, gunshot wound or a uh, fracture, frostbite, something like that. Most of the time, this is what they're going to get is the Tdap or the booster. Um, so it's going to, um, it's for those at risk and then for general prevention, like this is the, if you're wondering if you're immunized, uh, immunized against this. Um, and so this is what everyone, you have to have this for nursing school and to go into the hospital. Um, we get a Tdapt, we get one every 10 years. Um, and so there's, and I'm, on the next page, I'm going to show you the table in the book that kind of tells you when you give um, what for what. So, um, but this is for more people with mild or minor wounds. Um, and um, for those that have had a recent, maybe they've had all three of their um, Tdap uh, shots in their series or a recent booster, um, or um, if they have more of like those mild or minor wounds. And like I said, that one takes a few weeks to work. So this is the um, table in your book. And so this is going to kind of help guide you. So, um, you know, questions on the exam are usually going to be related around like, do what kind of um, treatment do we need to give them? Like, do, do, or do they qualify for a TIG or do they need a TDAP? And you can see most people here qualify for the TDAP or like they need the TD or TDAP. Um, the only patient that needs the TIG is going to be um, someone who um, we don't know if they've had a vaccine um, for TDAP or they've had less than three doses. Um, then we're going to give them, remember the TIG is going to be that right now boost of defense to help fight that infection, whereas the TDAP is going to um, just help in the, over a few weeks to help build up their immunity uh, to if there's a possibility of them having tetanus. So you can kind of look here and get a better idea as to when you're gonna to need to do this. So you can see for some of these, like if it's been less than five years since I've had my last Tdap, I don't need to necessarily get another booster, but pretty much as a whole, if it's been greater, it's been five to 10 years, um, um, or greater than 10 years, um, what do you call them? I just need another Tdap. If I don't know if they've had any Tdap or they've had less than three doses, they need the immunoglobulin plus the Tdap. So um, as a whole, kind of keep in your head that most of the time the answer is going to be that we're gonna give the Tdap, but unless it's a very dirty wound, um, when it says all other wounds here, it's talking about a very dirty wound, or if we do not know their vaccination status or they haven't had all three doses. So hopefully that makes sense and it's not too confusing. I know sometimes getting all, all the numbers and tables and stuff can be confusing, but you know, that's pretty much tetanus in a basket. I hope that it helped you to understand a little bit better. See you next time.